The following segment is sponsored by El Tigre Silver Corp., trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol ELS.V and on the OTCQX as EGRTF. El Tigre Silver Corp. is focused on silver exploration and development in prolific Sonora State, Mexico. Find them on the web at eltigresilvercorp.com. Join me for a conversation with a frequent guest of the show, David Morgan, the Silver Guru, an expert on money, metals, and mining, also a lecturer and an author. Mr. Morgan has written Get the Skinny on Silver Investing, available on Amazon.com. His website is TheMorganReport.com. David, welcome back to the program. Great to be with you, Ellis. I'm just looking at an article that you forwarded to me, and I know we've discussed this in the past, but it's been a while. And I'm not sure if we covered this specific point or not. China is reported to be backing its yuan with gold, and our own dollar is no longer backed by gold. What does this mean? Well, it's something that I looked at a long time ago, one of the earlier issues of the Morgan Report going back in the early 2000s. There was a meeting in Southeast Asia, and very few people knew about it. And it was about a gold-backed yuan. And I you know, reported it and said, you know, don't be surprised that uh, this is going to take place someday. More recently, just a couple months ago in the Morgan Report, I talked about there's really two factions vying for global dominance from the monetary system. And that is you've got the Anglo-American empire that's existed for quite some time and is still the dominating force since the U.S. buck is still the reserve currency. But China and Russia just keep accumulating more and more gold, and they're very happy to take it from the, the West because the West just gone on this brainwashing campaign, I'll call it, to uh, convince the majority that gold has no meaning in the monetary system when history proves anything but that. So now we see this coming out in the mainstream press where China is basically, you know, saying, according to this article, that they're considering a, a gold back yuan. I think it goes back to something as simple as, he who owns the gold makes the rules. The short version of monetary history is pretty simple. gold back currency stability, unbacked currency instability, and it goes back and forth. And that's a very, very simplified version, but the general idea is correct. When you have stability in the monetary system, you have greater production, more freedom usually, and people prosper. And when you have an unstable monetary system, you get eventually you get chaos. And it goes back and forth. This is nothing new. I mean, that's the thing about history is most people don't ever get any history background. So everything that's in front of them, they're getting from the mainstream spin media and don't really question anything and do very little critical thinking. So it's all like, oh, this is brand new, it's never happened. But uh, the old adage, nothing new under the sun, really applies here. So first they help suppress the price of gold, then they accumulate it along with Russia, and then they make this announcement. What's that mean for the dollar? Anything immediate? Well, not immediate. I think, you know, it could happen. There's always anomalies in the financial system, and there are these uh, episodes in history where things do happen abruptly. But we've seen the facts, and the facts are slowly, many countries have been edging away from the U.S. dollar. Several examples. One is the amount of purchases of U.S. debt by China has been reduced substantially. Secondly, you see many nation states that are going to trade currency to currency, circumventing the U.S., so you've got uh, like a Russia-China agreement, you've got even Australia in the mix, you've got India, and all these countries are making agreements, Brazil, to make a trade basis each other's currency rather than using the U.S. dollar. The petrodollar is still in existence, and that's one of the big important facts that keeps the dollar strong is in order to buy oil, you still have to go through the U.S. dollar. People that have tried to circumvent that, such as Saddam Hussein, who was going to go to the euro, he's no longer in existence. Gaddafi was going basically to a gold-backed system. He's going to circumvent the dollar for oil, and he no longer exists. So there are prices to pay if you want to get out of the petrodollar system. Again, you know, don't take my word for it. Form your own opinion, but at least do the research to uh, form an opinion. Don't just use your emotion. So the dollar supremacy reigns uh, still due to the petrodollar, and it's being defended quite readily. Nonetheless, trade is more than just oil. And a lot of these trade agreements, again, are basis each other's currency. And the more important fact, I think, is where is the supremacy? Where does it lie? I mean, the gold standard is called a gold standard for a reason. You know, it's funny that we get kind of that broad brush, you know, the gold bugs. 
Well, one of the gold bugs, probably some of the best critical thinkers that I know of, and of course this is kind of speaking as one of the group, but nonetheless, a lot of the mainstream or the masses don't think. They just run on their emotions based on what the mainstream media tells them to think. And they are conditioned like Pavlov's dog. If they say, well, that's conspiracy theory. So as soon as they hear that, they automatically go into this part of their neurotransmitters and say, oh, well, they'll dismiss it because, you know, so-and-so triggered that word to me. Rather than, you know, use their human ability to actually do some critical thinking or some research or both and investigate open-mindedly what's really going on. So again, I come back to something I think most people have heard, and that is he who owns the gold makes the rules. If China has enough gold now to back their currency with gold, in a sense, game over. Now, it doesn't mean immediately that things change drastically, but the trend will continue and probably accelerate. Should we be accumulating gold and silver and the Chinese yuan? Well, as far as currency play, I won't comment. I don't really know, but possibly. Certainly, it's appreciated versus the dollar. And gold and silver, I think we've been saying that for years now. Uh, Of course, you should accumulate some. And, you know, I just did a a show with the Financial Sense News Hour a day or two ago, and we talked about what's the proper percentage. Some people get so enamored with learning the facts that they tend to go all in when perhaps they'd be better off not going all in. In other words, they put in too much percentage of their net worth into the precious metals because, unfortunately, the metals really go up and down price-wise quite substantially, as we've we've witnessed over the last couple of years. Nonetheless, I think if you don't have a position in physical metal, you're really putting yourself in a compromised situation, especially... If something like this takes place in the future, and for me, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. I'm going to say something a bit off-color now, tongue-in-cheek, if you will. When are we going to become an economic-free zone linked to China, much like Hong Kong is? Well, I don't know. Doug Casey, who's probably one of the most outspoken that there is in the industry, I mean, he jokes about Europe being uh, housekeepers for the Chinese. You know, I use that as a metaphor, of course, but the idea being that, you know, China is the leader, China is the up-and-comer, certainly they are not perfect or have, and they certainly have some issues. There's political issues as well as economic ones, but nonetheless, the shift in power is very clear and very apparent. If you really want to see what's going on, in my view, I would suggest running a DVD, uh, looking at a film that's fairly recent called Looper, L-O-O-P-E-R. The premise is kind of an interesting sci-fi story, but the background story is basically gold and particularly silver, and also the geopolitical change between the United States and China. And this guy that's uh, one of the loopers moves to China, and it shows the advancement in culture that's gone on in the East versus what the U.S. looks like a few years out. And I agree with the premise. I think that this film depicts fairly accurately what we're going to be witnessing maybe five years out, and the place to be, according to this film, and not that I want to move to China. What I'm suggesting here is that the wealth, as an Austrian economist, Wealth is defined by means of production. Whoever's producing things is a wealthier country than people that have to buy from the producers. Certainly, if you are a landowner and you produce wealth, either growing something on the ground or digging it out of the ground, that's real wealth. And those that have that are in a superior position to those that don't. That's the micro scale, and the macro scale is the same thing. If you're in China and they're producing almost everything that the world needs or wants, and you are in a position where all you produce are pieces of paper, then sooner or later the dominance is going to be very clear. And that's, again, what I'm suggesting is that the shift is moving east, and it will continue to do so. I mean, I think one of the biggest advocates of what's really going on is someone that's far more notable than I and has a much bigger following, and that would be Jim Rogers. I mean, Jim Rogers says... You know, teach your kids Chinese. Make sure that they can speak Chinese. That is where it's going to be in the next century. You know, I was in a business meeting just the other day where I was told exactly that. What's fascinating is that you live in a city such as Los Angeles, New York, Toronto, or Vancouver, and there are many Chinese with their hands in a variety of businesses. It's just the way it is. And if you happen to be doing business with Chinese partners, you may be doing very well. Otherwise, we're not producing much individually, as you say, here in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, we are somewhat shifted drastically. I mean, from being probably the greatest economic power 
uh, ever to where we are now has been a substantial loss. And, you know, the unemployment figures show that. And even the people that are employed, I mean, look over the last decade or so, a lot of people would had fairly good jobs that were high paying and high skilled. A lot of those have been removed. They've been outsourced. They've moved. You know, you can blame NAFTA. You can blame a lot of things. But the point is that it exists. And a lot of these highly skilled people have moved into jobs that are really substandard to what their skill set is. And then you have, unfortunately, very unskilled labor that needs to be educated at some level to hold a better job type of thing. So it's really a mess. And the Chinese, you know, they don't have the social safety net that the U.S. has. So they're motivated. I mean, these people are motivated. (laughs) They like to eat, just like everyone on the planet. So if you don't have a social safety net and you're not guaranteed, you know, food stamps, you are motivated, and that means that you are going to take seriously your education. You're going to take things a lot more seriously because you uh, have to compete. So, unfortunately, there's not a lot that can be done about this as far as the major macro trend. This article is probably somewhat of a trial balloon, I think, to see what the reaction will be, see if the mainstream picks it up at all. But nonetheless, I do think this is a situation that I do believe will happen. How soon, whatever. The repercussions in the article, I think, are fairly accurate. No one really knows. But anyone that goes back on a stable currency system, China's the most likely, is going to be not only the dominating currency, but if they're also the biggest producer, they will be in dominance. And this is something that's already taken place. I think most people have enough of a cursory understanding of basic history to know that the sun never set on the great British Empire and that under the pound sterling system, the silver standard, that England was the dominant force in the world for a very long time, and then that was usurped by the U.S. of A., and that's now being usurped by the East, primarily China. You know, you see more news of this type in Chinese and Russian publications that publish in English than you would in the U.S. press. And this particular article did come from a Russian publication. It seems like you get a much more balanced look at what's happening in the U.S. from foreign entities and not so much right here. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I absolutely do. And it's very unfortunate because one of the best things about freedom is freedom of the press. And there is really no such thing in the mainstream press. There's the alternative press like the Alice Martin show. But as far as getting the truth from any of the mainstream press, forget it. These things are owned by very elitist type thinkers that lean one direction and have an agenda. And this stuff is spun in a certain direction again and again and again. And of course, we think... Uh, I shouldn't say we, I certainly don't, and and most people that get their news from the internet probably don't, but the majority just buys into the news. Well, the news is so slanted, it's unbelievable that you're much better off sourcing news off the internet, looking at it from even the BBC, which I'm not a huge fan of, is a little bit more open than anything coming out of the U.S. press, but you should be looking, in my view, at stuff coming out of very many sources. You should look at coming out of Europe, coming out of Russia, coming out of China, coming out of anywhere but the U.S. I mean, you can use the U.S. as a contrast point, but basically if you're getting your news from the U.S., you're not getting news, you're getting propaganda. We'll be right back. The Ellis Martin Report is sponsored by El Tigre Silver Corp., trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol ELS.V and on the OTCQX as EGRTF. Silver has been considered a precious metal for 6,000 years and currency since 600 B.C. It's been commercially mined in Mexico since 1530 in mineral prolific and mining friendly Sonora State, where El Tigre Silver Corp.'s 5,000 meter drill program is now underway. El Tigre's properties with gold and silver mining concessions span approximately 267 square miles. With an attractive share structure and a strong proven management team, El Tigre Silver Corp. is poised to identify a resource in an area that from 1903 to 1938 produced 75 million ounces of silver and 380,000 ounces of gold. Additionally, their tailing stockpile is currently progressing to production. Learn more about El Tigre Silver Corp. by visiting their website, eltigresilvercorp.com, or click through El Tigre's logo on the homepage of our website, ellismartinreport.com. We offer expert opinions only. Find them on our website, ellismartinreport.com. That's ellismartinreport.com. I'd like to jump back to our discussion about the Chinese. Really, in essence, we are seeing survival of the fittest in business and capitalism, free trade on a global level with the Chinese trumping most other countries. And since we can't compete in the U.S. any longer, we're losing out. 
I hesitate to say, like we should. Yeah, I mean, you know, that might sound anti-American. and I don't know really how to respond. Let me just pause for a second. Well, you and I are both patriots, David. I like to think that this is a patriotic discussion. Yeah, but no, I, I, you know, yeah, you know, white head and heart are for everything that America stood for in the, in the beginning. It's just that that has, been, has changed so drastically. It's morphed into something almost opposite of what it started as. I mean, if we were allowed to be more free and basically produce what we want without all these regulations and oversights and everything else that's going on, the bureaucracy that's been, gotten way overburdensome to the average individual. I think that uh, the, you know, the United States of America could certainly compete with anybody. But the problem is that the uh, political structure has become so burdensome over time and these trade agreements and everything else that basically thwart any real economic activity And then, of course, the bigger thing on top of that probably is the banking system. The banking system was destroyed under the Clinton administration when they took out the Glass-Steagall regulation, and they basically let the Wall Street banksters rob the commercial banks of their funds and gamble with them. And, of course, this led to the too big to fail, so now the burden is on the citizenry to pay back these loans that were lost by gambling debts instrumented by Wall Street. If we had Glass-Steagall, the commercial banks would never have been able to put their money at risk, and that money would be in commercial banks, and that would be going to farmers, that would be going to building local infrastructure, that would be going to the local people. But that was, again, taken away when Glass-Steagall was destroyed. So those protections in the banking system, I think, have been one of the biggest problems that have made it all very, very difficult for us, the U.S. of A., to get back on track. Well, along with the banking system in place that you've just reviewed, and maybe this is a leading question here, along with liberal progressive politics, the gap is only increasing between the haves and the have-nots, the wealthy and the poor, which is exactly what the left side of the old fence has been rallying against since they first pushed out their baby teeth. It's completely counterproductive to their own constituents, this philosophy. Very ironic, isn't it? I mean, basically, if they want equality and everyone to be equal, all of these left-type policies have done the opposite. And it's unfortunate, and you're correct. I mean, the best way for people to become their best is to be free and allow the individual, which is what a republic is. I mean, remember when the story about Ben Franklin coming out of the Constitutional Convention was asked by that lady, what have you given us? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it, ma'am. Now, whether or not that's a true story or not, I think the point is well made, that that requires a moral population that's educated and constantly vigilant. And we've been anything but. I mean, we are to blame for a great deal of it. But to think that, you know, if we just get the right people to redistribute wealth, and that's going to make everybody better... That's not thinking, and that's not the way this country was set up. It was set up for everyone to have enough freedom to do whatever they needed to do their best so that everyone could do their best. And if you have that kind of a system, then you get massive wealth creation, and the individual determines with their voting of their pocketbook, so to speak, what they want and what they need, and it's a very prosperous way to go. Well, hopefully the Chinese will lead us back along that path. Ironically, it looks like that. Certainly, there is the top end that is communist and all that. But, you know, I don't like to get any political arguments because they're emotionally based. But having been there, in a lot of ways, they're freer than the U.S. Now, not in all ways that we could have a, you know, discussion about the party and all of that. And I don't really want to get into that. But, you know, having been on the ground there, there's a lot freer in many areas. Tell us about the Morgan Report. Okay, I just want to let everybody know the best way to follow us is to get on our YouTube channel, Silver Guru. The Morgan Report is a monthly publication. We've gone back to the basic service, which is very cheap relative to our peers. Everything about the basic service and the basic plus service are on the right-hand side of the website. I did two videos so you can actually watch those and get a pretty good feel for uh, what they are. And if you get on our free email list, which is a weekly publication, during that first few weeks that you're on that, we will offer you a 30-day trial subscription to the Morgan Report so you can actually try it out for free, get the full in-depth, behind the scenes, so to speak, stuff off of the report for free for 30 days, see if you like it, see if it's for you or not. 
David, thank you again for joining me today on the program. Uh, Thank you. My pleasure. I've been chatting with analyst and newsletter writer David Morgan. His website is themorganreport.com. Listen to this segment again on the podcast page of our website, ellismartinreport.com, or listen to the Ellis Martin Report in its entirety on iTunes. This segment has been sponsored by El Tigre Silver Corp., trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol ELS.V and on the OTCQX as EGRTF. The El Tigre Silver Corp. is focused on silver exploration and development in prolific Sonora State, Mexico. Find them on the web at eltigresilvercorp.com.